Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and as you can see, I've got lots, and I mean lots of motherboards. And I need to talk to you about why they were a bit of a nightmare, but we finally got there in the end. Let's do this. The Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE headset from Corsair. With a sleek premium lightweight design, comfortable memory foam ear cups and subtle RGB lighting, it doesn't look like your typical gaming headset. With a detachable broadcast grade microphone, patented slipstream wireless technology, and tuned 50mm neodymium premium drivers, it's simply the best headset Corsair have ever created. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So today sees the launch of Z490, and that's why I have this huge bundle of motherboards here. I've got a stack from Gigabyte Aorus, I've got a stack from MSI, and a stack from ASUS. Now, when Intel sent their processors, which are the i5-10600K and the i9-10900K, uh, which came in this ever so fancy kind of presentation box, which is a little bit upsetting because retail customers aren't actually gonna be able to get their hands on this. But when they sent it, it did come with uh, a motherboard. And that motherboard is at the bottom of this stack and it is the Maximus 12 Extreme. Now, as soon as we got that, admittedly the CPUs came I guess a little bit late, a little bit later than what I would have liked. We had, well, not very much time to test at all. And we've actually been processing and kind of rejigging all of our testing methodology. And that kind of brings me on to the video that we're doing today because we had to revamp everything for the sake of CPU testing and for Z490 testing, but it didn't exactly go without a hitch. Now to start with, Gigabyte sent us some BIOS updates. That's nothing out of the ordinary. As we generally get closer to our release time, we generally find that brands will send us out BIOSes and we test everything. And then they send out another BIOS and ask us to retest. And then depending on how much time we have, we either say yes or we tell them where to go. With Gigabyte, they actually got the BIOS update to us pretty much in reasonable timing. So we were able to test all of these boards. The Aorus Extreme at the bottom, they have actually sent us a new BIOS but we didn't get time to test it. So I guess maybe we could do something later on as kind of time develops and go from there. When it comes to MSI, they were actually pretty much the most impressive. They were at the forefront of it. I made them aware of the issues that we were having with specifically the i9 processor, which all came down to the thermal velocity boost or TVB. Basically it wasn't doing what it was meant to do, which was to boost to 5.3 gigahertz on single, or in some cases, if the thermal on power kind of power headroom is there, it would do it on two cores. That wasn't the case with any of these boards. So we reached out to MSI, they fixed the BIOS and happy days. It was all basically to do with multi-core enhancement, or so we thought, and it came down to PL1 and PL2, and the timing between trading off and changing between PL1 and PL2 as to if it could actually hit that state of 5.3 gigahertz. So MSI were pretty, pretty good with things. We managed to get the BIOS, we managed to go into Cinebench R15, test it, and it was fine. It showed us that we were at 5.3 gigahertz for a brief amount of time. Azus were a little bit slower, shall we say. And I don't want to sort of, you know, have this video as to go through and sort of, oh, you guys are terrible and you guys were worse and you guys were better and stuff. Everyone was pretty much equally as bad and equally as good. Let's call it like that. Let's try and be fair and diplomatic with it. But Azus were a little bit later at giving us what they needed. And they did things slightly differently because they were trying to stick to the strictest kind of specifications that Intel had given them. So all of these motherboard manufacturers, Intel will say, these are the specifications for Z490. You can do this, you can do this. You cannot do this and you cannot do that. If I remember rightly, the one thing that they couldn't do was changing in voltages and I believe it was VCCIO, if I remember rightly. Those were the one, uh, those were the two things that basically they couldn't change. Any, anything above and beyond that was entirely up to them. That would be still sticking to the Intel standards. The problem is when one brand does one thing, one brand does another, and one brand does well, something completely different. How do we make it all fair? So this is, I guess, past now all that rambling, where I sort of get to the, the meat of this video. Basically, to make things fair is not easy, but we try to do our very, very best. And even when we're comparing motherboards from, say, Z490 to Z390, People sort of, well, how is that a fair test when you're using different processors? Well, we have to because this is a Socket 1200 processor. Z390 doesn't use Socket 1200. So you can only try and be as fair as you physically can, but it's always, there's always gonna be issues. 
So I guess dealing with the hardware that we actually tested everything on. So I'm not just talking Z490. We've been retesting Z390. We've been retesting Z270, Z170. We've gone through just the history of Intel and AMD. I've tested every single AMD processor since Ryzen launched, including Threadripper. And I'm not saying that with our Z490 or even our i9 and i5 reviews, that all of these results are gonna be in there because you're not gonna see it on the video, especially if you're looking on your smartphone. And that's a big complaint we've had recently. But we've tried to have as much comparisons as physically possible while trying to make it as fair as possible. So I guess CPU, it's gonna change platform to platform. There's nothing we can do about that. The motherboard in terms of chipset is going to change platform to platform. So how can we keep things nice and concise? Graphics card. So we've got the RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition. We've used this graphics card on all of our tests. We've never changed the graphics card. We've made sure that we used the same uh, graphics card driver as well. And if you wanna find out information on all this, just go and check out one of the written reviews on etechnics.com. We actually have a testing methodology page and it will list what version of Windows we used, what version of the Nvidia driver we used, and we will stick to that. If Windows or GeForce Experience automatically tries to update something, we're gonna be like, hold your, you know, slow it down, hold your roll, and we're not gonna allow it to happen for the sake of comparisons and keeping fair. Cooling wise, not to a D15S. We used it on everything, even the mini ITX boards. It looked absolutely ridiculous, but we used it on there. In terms of the SSD, Seagate Firecuda 510 one terabyte. We used, we used exactly the same drive uh, and basically used it on every single board, on every single CPU. And then when it comes to the memory, we used the Nighthawk uh, from Team Group, 3000 megahertz, 16 gig across two eight gig modules. The reason we went with this and not something faster, these boards can do faster, we know that. AMD can do faster. 3600 megahertz is a sweet spot for AMD, but that's not exactly gonna work on Z270 due to memory controller issues. It's not gonna work on first gen Ryzen due to memory controller issues. 3000 megahertz worked an absolute treat on everything. Trying to make things as fair as possible. So yes, we had some problems. And going back to the whole kind of BIOS issue thing, I have to make it clear that with Gigabyte Aorus, MSI, and Asus, I can't comment for ASRock because we haven't got any of their boards here, but I can honestly say that the BIOS revisions that we got, and we did get a lot, they are beta BIOSes. So the results that you're gonna see in all of our Z490 coverage, whether you're watching the YouTube videos of which we have a video on every single motherboard, and then we have a video on the processors. They didn't kind of warrant having their own videos, one for both of them. But on every single one, you will see results. I honestly believe these results, as time goes on, will get better because they are beta BIOSes. They're not final release BIOSes. And in all honesty, because of the TVB issue, which Gigabyte Aorus fixed it one way, MSI fixed it another way, Azus fixed it a completely different way, I honestly believe there may even be a Microsoft Intel hotfix coming pretty soon. So I guess with the performance, you're probably gonna see the Aorus Extreme was outbeaten, I believe, by the Mini ITX board. The MSI Gaming Carbon and actually the Tomahawk, which I haven't even got here, I don't think. The Tomahawk, which isn't even here, it's somewhere. I don't even know where, I'm surrounded by motherboards, but the Tomahawk outperformed the Godlike, if I remember rightly. In terms of Azus, the Tough Gaming and the Mini ITX outperformed the Extreme. There's definitely a lot of things that need addressing. And I'm not gonna say that this was the worst launch ever because I've had a lot, lot worse with a lot less time, but it's been a slog. Imagine each board taking about four to four and a half hours to test each. Processors the same, change time in between. And I just wanted to add some transparency to anyone who's watching these videos, anyone who's gonna go on etechnics.com and, and see the written content, that we've tried to be as fair as possible, we've tried to include as much data as possible, but sometimes even we're up against it. And I wanted to sort of make it clear before people started commenting about these results are off. How can a $800 motherboard be outperformed by you know a $200 motherboard or $300 motherboard? There's reasons, definitely. And sometimes it's not all down to performance either. Even sort of looking at the performance between these, I think you could honestly say that there is a little bit of margin of error. I could test this board and this board and there might be 50 points between it, test it again and it might go the other way. But there was definitely a lot more to it. So feature wise, yes, more expensive board, you're gonna get more features. 
performance wise at the moment it's anyone's game so yeah bit of a weird one I swear I say that at the end of the video but this really is a bit of a weird one and frankly I'm just glad that this is all over because I personally tested all of these Z490 motherboards including the Tomahawk which should be sitting here so um yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video and be sure to check out content on every single one of these because we work bloody hard to make it happen. So uh, hopefully you guys appreciate it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And uh, if you've got any comments about our testing methodology and things like that, let us know in the comments section below. We try and obviously cater this for you guys. These are consumer reviews, hence why we didn't add multi-core enhancement and stuff like that. We did it in the fairest way we know possible. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. See you later.